Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Rebecca Guy and I'm from the Kirby Institute in SW Sydney. And I'm the director of the Australian Research Council's Industrial Transformation Research Hub to combat antimicrobial resistance. We call this the AMR Hub for short. We've invited you all here today to officially launch this hub. Before I begin, I'd like to acknowledge the traditional owners of the lands from where we're all joining from today. And for me, it's the Gadigal people and pay my respects to their elders, past, present and emerging and any Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander people who have joined us today. We are joined today by Judy Zelke, Chief Executive Officer of the Australian Research Council, Professor Attila Bruns, Vice Chancellor and President of UNSW Sydney, and Professor Sean Emery, Senior Vice Dean of Research, Medicine and Health, UNSW Sydney, as well as other senior leaders, deans, heads of department, as well as many of our chief investigators, partners, PhD scholars, postdoctoral researchers, and university staff. I welcome you all and thank you for joining us here today. The launch of the AMR Hub is an important event. We would have loved to have launched it in person, but COVID obviously has meant we are launching virtually. We are proud of the Hub, which has built on strong working collaborations for many years between universities, industry partners and stakeholders, both nationally and internationally. And it formalises what aims to be transformational through its response to antimicrobial resistance. The AMR Hub collaboration brings together a team that will tackle AMR, which is a global challenge. It affects the health, wellbeing and economy of everyone throughout the world. The aim of the AMR Hub is to take a holistic approach to this major issue through the development of a range of new molecular diagnostic tests to ensure we use antibiotics more precisely, while at the same time improving the processes for identifying and optimising both old and new antibiotics. All of this supported by social science, modelling, health economics and epidemiological research to optimise these developments. We've chosen sexually transmitted infections, or STIs for short, as an AMR exemplar, because many STIs have high levels of resistance due to many antibiotics, and many antibiotics, um, sorry, um, high levels of resistance to many antibiotics, and there's also a shortage of antibiotics globally available to effectively treat them. STIs are considered in the top 10 priority AMR pathogens globally. The issue of AMR and how the hub aims to tackle this wicked problem will be presented in a short video we'll share with you a little later on the launch. But look, the um, hub would not have been able to be established without the support of UNSW Sydney and the Australian Research Council. So now I'd like to begin the formal speeches and invite Professor Attila Bruns, Vice Chancellor and President of UNSW Sydney to say a few words. Thank you kindly, Rebecca. I really appreciate it. You're very warm well welcome. And it's wonderful to be here today with you all. Uh, congratulations on this fantastic hub. As I start, I too would like to acknowledge the traditional owners on land which we speak and pay respects to elders past and present. I'd also like to acknowledge elders as being the traditional custodians of knowledge for this place, because knowledge is at the heart of what we are as a university. And you heard Rebecca in her introduction, knowledge and knowledge from a variety of sources is at the heart of how we can tackle some of Australia and the globe's most critical health challenges. As I said, I'm delighted to be part of this exciting occasion to launch the ARC Hub to combat antimicrobial resistance. And thank you very much for the invitation to join. The type of interdisciplinary collaboration that you seek to foster through this hub, I think should be absolutely applauded. Bringing different expertise, skills, perspectives, all however, with this common mission. The results and outcomes that are more responsive to the needs and expectations of 21st century society, society as a whole, and responsive to the needs of an individual. The pandemic brought to us the value of research in the global consciousness. Uh, the expectation that experts can find solutions to our lockdown, disrupted lives, the economy was a heavy burden for many researchers across the world, but they rose to the challenge and it's been vindicated. In fact, the speed at which vac vaccines came to market have, I think, some people thinking that research is quick and easy process. We all know in this room that it is far from that. It takes time, dedication and a real deep amount of commitment. And if we are to advance the next generations of medical breakthroughs in the most effective way, as you heard Rebecca say, a holistic and multidisciplinary research is the key. I'd like to give you an example of the Randwick Health and Innovation Precinct along these lines. A way of explanation to those of you from outside UNSW, 
This initiative brings together partners from government, industry, four specialty hospitals, preclinical facilities, nine medical research institutes, all into one physical zone. But beyond the physical zone and beyond medicine, education, science, research practitioners are drawn from all across UNSW, from disciplines as diverse as engineering, arts and design, business, law, all with a shared purpose. In fact, at the moment, as we develop some of the buildings around uh, in, in the precinct, we have arguments amongst many of our faculties on how many of our, of our staff, academics and researchers from arts, shall we say, or architecture can be up there really contributing to the health outcomes that the medical precinct is championing. As you can see, this is a deliberate multidisciplinary approach, all designed to have a multiplier effect, multiplying the delivery of positive impacts directly to patients, the carers, and ultimately, of course, if you add all of those up, you get the health outcomes for local, national, and international communities. This type of collaboration and breaking down of silos, as you all know, is the way forward. The rich asset of knowledge that is held within the research community is being realized by private and public sectors. So the market knowledge and commercializations that industry offer is equally potent. We need to partner on both of those. But to do that, I think sometimes the onus is on us to think differently about how we work, to be innovative, to be entrepreneurial, to try and go halfway to finding new ways of working. But I'm an optimist. Research translation, commercialization, and industry collaboration, I think, in my opinion now, is about to enter a truly golden era. We have finally got an alignment between both state and federal governments seeking to exploit world-class research, manufacturing private industry, really driving this. So in just a short time since the election, I've hosted ministers for education, industry, science, climate change, all on campus. And that's being repeated at universities across the sector. Similarly, I used an example of a trailblazer literally just before Christmas with four weeks to prepare. UNSW, like many universities across the country, managed to pull together $100 million worth of industry partners, all to tackle a common purpose. So I believe there's real appetite here and more broadly for public institutions, for universities, we are public institutions, to really realise our core purpose, and that is for public good. And in the public good, what greater service could we provide and what greater service could medicine perform for public to define the real solution to that of antimicrobial resistance bacteria and viruses, especially as targeted here in this hub in the area of sexual health, that is a critical area of concern to not just Australia, but our whole region. I, like many of us, take deeply for granted the safe, effective antibiotics that have changed the face of public health over the decades, changed the way that we can live our lives. If that way is to continue, that way of life is to continue, we must bring together the vast expertise in your various networks in the very real hope of developing diagnostic technologies and identifying new drugs to remedy this growing problem. So in closing, thank you very much for today. Congratulations on the launch of this amazing hub. And I would like to thank and congratulate Rebecca and the hub team and applaud all of you for your commitment and dedication for this work. I know it is not easy. Thank you. Thank you very much, Attila, for your kind and also very inspiring and motivating words. We really appreciate your time today and um, sharing your knowledge and expertise with us. I'd now like to invite Professor Sean Emery, Senior Vice Dean of Research, Medicine and Health, UNSW Sydney, to say a few words. Rebecca, thank you so very much. And can I also add um, my congratulations to you, your colleagues, through this enormous consortium uh, for the launch that we're celebrating today. And thank you for the opportunity to speak on behalf of the Faculty of Medicine and Health at UNSW Sydney. Uh, I wanted to start with a bit of a position statement, if I may, that reflects what we as a faculty believe our role in society might be. And quite simply, through both research and education, we've proposed that our primary objective is to improve health outcomes amongst the communities that we serve. Our ability to deliver against this ambition really has to be focused on the areas where we have established strength, expertise, and are recognised for accomplishment. And in that regard, the University of New South Wales, through primarily the Kirby Institute, but other organisational units in disciplines related to infectious disease, is clearly world standing uh, by some margin. And the fact that this ITRP hub builds on that expertise and that pedigree is deeply gratifying to the university and to the faculty. In addition to focusing on established areas of strength, we have more or less insisted where appropriate and where applicable that activities really have to be 
fundamentally collaborative by composition of membership of research teams and research groups. Uh, and those substantial organisational realities have to sit behind how we propose we're going to tackle some of the more wicked societal problems with which we're all confronted. And once again, gratifyingly, the Kirby Institute has a now nearly 40 year track record of dealing with wicked global health problems domestically, internationally and regionally, as you're proposing with the hub that we're launching today from the platform of developing scale, breadth and depth of the intellectual, entrepreneurial and innovative talent that is brought to bear with which to address the issue that you are seeking to resolve. Put simply, big problems need big multidisciplinary teams in order to address them. And in that regard, can I from the faculty salute the accomplishment of the consortium that you and your colleagues have put together that even as we went to press, I believe, has already grown with the addition of potentially other organisations who wish to be part of this incredible exercise. Since the first use of penicillin, probably 70 years ago, nearly four generations of the human race have enjoyed the enormous benefits of te technological advance in diagnosis and treatment of microbial diseases. The potency of these advances, advances revealed primarily in incre increasing life expectancies amongst communities where they are, they are available, should not be confused with their inherent fragility. We, the host, have been battling the pathogens, many of which are bacteria, across many millennia. As we evolve and develop new weapons with which to address their presence and our interactions, so do they and it is a battle that probably will go on for as long as we're both on the same planet. The rather confronting reality for us all is that the evidence is already available. Microbes and bacteria in particular have incredible propensities to, self, to select for variants that have selective advantages. They capitalize on our poor, poor use of the tools that we have at our disposal with which to address their presence. Global agencies, governments and scholarly organisations have been alerting us for nearly two decades to the growing challenge of antimicrobial resistance. Within these warnings are important concepts such as antimicrobial stewardship and improving the use and utility of the drugs and the diagnostic testing platforms that are deployed throughout uh, healthcare systems in the world. And the critical need for us to remain as best we are able one step ahead of the microbes that cause diseases of concern. And to include within that the rapid creation and evaluation of new technologies that might give us the competitive advantage that keeps us ahead of the pathogens. This ARC supported ITRP led by Professor Rebecca Guy at the Kirby Institute brings together uh, at least 18 partner organizations, importantly, including private sector, small medium enterprises, international agencies with a particular focus on the Southeast Asia region, and colleagues from across the academy uh, in Australia through a number of important long-term collaborations with partner universities in both New South Wales, in Victoria, in Queensland. In many respects, we could not have asked for a better model to exemplify how we believe strategically business should be done going forward if we are to achieve our faculty objective to improve health outcomes. The ITRP focus on technological approaches to point of care diagnostics applicable to bacterial STIs and the capacity to inform the development of new therapeutic advances is critical to combating antimicrobial drug resistance in far broader terms. What works in gonorrhea may well work in sepsis. What works in other forms of bacterial STI may have utility in quite simple but potentially quite complicated, less sinister bacterial infections 
for example, in children. And we set important platforms when we are focused on one key set of deliverables that have direct and potential utility in much broader terms in other areas of medicine through technological advance. The faculty really is delighted to be part of the launch and we start by saluting the accomplishment of the entire team. We're committed to supporting the hub and ensuring it delivers on its ambitious portfolio of activities and objectives. We will remain close uh, and we rely on you, Rebecca, to keep us proximal at all times and very much available to support all of you as you go about your business and our congratulations and best wishes going forward. Thank you so much, Sean. And um, the Hub very much appreciates, appreciates the support of UNSW Sydney and um, will continue to access that support throughout the Hub. There'd be no question there. So thank you very much. So it's great pleasure that I now would like to invite Judy Zelke, who's the Chief Executive Officer of the Australian Research Council, to say a few words on behalf of the ASC and the Honourable Jason Clare, Minister for Education. Thanks, Rebecca, and good afternoon, everyone. Uh, I'd also like to uh, respect, respectfully acknowledge the traditional owners of the lands on which we meet today. Uh, I'm in um, uh, Canberra, so I'd like to uh, pay my respects to uh, the Ngunnawal and Ngambri peoples and to elders past, present and emerging. Uh, I'd particularly like to thank um, the Indigenous researchers for their contribution to the amazing research that's undertaken in Australia and the tremendous benefit that it brings to our environment and our culture and our people. I'm delighted to be here today for the launch of the ARC Industrial Transformation Research Hub to combat anti antimicrobial resistance, uh, which has been uh, supported by the ITRP uh, scheme. Uh, I don't know uh, if you're all aware, but I arrived in the ARC in February this year, and I think already one of my key aims is going to be to come up with shorter names, not only for programs, but also for hubs. Um, and uh, I, I think there's obviously an opportunity there um, to, to make those easier. The, uh, as Rebecca acknowledged, um, I uh, want to pass on um, my Minister's apologies for today. The Minister for Education, the Honourable Jason Clare, uh, he was um, unable to attend today, but I know uh, that uh, he was quite disappointed about that. It's lovely having um, a new minister who is so engaged and wanting to learn uh, about different uh, aspects of our, our programs and our other activities. It was great to have the opportunity um, to therefore uh, brief him in relation to the activities of the hub, uh, uh, particularly given its challenge in such a, a, you know, a globally important area and to have it as the example, his first example of a hub that he's actually focused on. So um, I hope that, uh, I know he's been um, uh, close by already, uh, Attila, but um, you know, maybe next time he's visiting, it would be a great opportunity for him um, to see the hub. Uh, in, in person. Uh, the ITRP, as you know, is part of our linkage program, uh, which supports collaborative research activity between Australian higher education sector and industry. And the scheme encourages Australia's best researchers in issues um, facing the uh, economics and training the future workforce um, as well. So hubs like this also build research capacity in industry partners and increases their innovation and competitiveness as well. It's great today to have the opportunity to, as I was saying earlier, learn more about the hub, its initial progress and, and future plans. Um, the, to see the aims of the scheme being put into, um, uh, into place in a hub is tremendous in that regard. Uh, as we all know, collaboration is critical to us achieving these major um, at challenges, problems that we have, and working with industry, with other researchers, and with the international partners uh, that you have, which is so important, um, it is absolutely fabulous. And when there are regional partners, uh, that's uh, particularly great to see. The um, 
I, I suppose the thing that I've learned since arriving uh, is the importance of the training, not only for our researchers, but also for our students uh, that are provided by the hub and in turn the infrastructure that is brought together uh, to support that work as well. And it's great to see that the hub is using the investment uh, from the ARC so effectively in that regard. Uh, whilst uh, it's just under $5 million that the ARC is providing, um, the partnerships involved here have put, um, brought together almost $7 million in funding. And I think that shows the uh, recognition by all involved of the importance of this area of work and achieving great outcomes uh, in, in that regard. So um, I'm sure our, our researchers, our students, and uh, the industry partners will um, get great benefit out of this work. And I can't help but say that I would look forward to hearing about those outcomes and, and uh, being able to be involved in um, any acknowledgement of those outcomes in, in the future. The, um, so I'll stop there and say congratulations to Rebecca and Michelle and the broader team uh, for the efforts that you've had so far to all of your partners uh, in stepping up and being involved in this work and uh, wish you all the best uh, for the future. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, Judy. Um, really appreciate your time and the support from ARC. Um, for many of you that may not know, the support you actually get from, the, from being part of a hub is incredible from ARC. Um, the, the first meetings, um, it's in, in a way like an induction meeting where you get to meet all the other hubs who are starting and some which are ongoing. You get to meet the staff at ARC, you receive a whole lot of advice on how they work and how to optimise. And um, from my personal perspective, I think it's a gold standard model in terms of um, taking on something which is very large, um, collaborative and very ambitious. Um, and from that point in time, we've had regular interactions via Michelle with the ARC team, um, you know, sharing things which have been challenging, such as COVID, and also sharing positive stories um, and getting advice along the way because the team at ARC have a lot of experience in managing these hubs. So just to um, commend the ARC for the support you provide for these hubs and you particularly, Judy, from attending today. Thank you very much. So um, before I move on just with a bit more detail, I'd also like to thank Attila and Sean again for their speeches. And I think it's really set the scene as to the importance of this problem. So now I'd like to take a bit of time to explain a bit more about the hub and also to thank people and organisations that have been involved in our journey to reach this point. I'm speaking on behalf um, of a village. Firstly, I'd like again to thank the ARC for their support and really their support in helping us with this important groundbreaking collaboration. And I'd like to thank all the people at UNSW Sydney um, from Knowledge Exchange, Research Contracts, um, and many, many other people um, who helped us in terms of the application and post award. The AMR Hub was actually established on the 16th of February of 2021 during COVID when it was um, in its peak, and uh, which presented some challenges for us in commencing our research. But I am happy to report that we now have got the research program up and running at full capacity, and we're well on our way to achieving the goals of the Hub. I'd like to acknowledge there are eight other hub directors who are part of this, and to name them, Dr. Tanya Applegate, Associate Professor Willa Houston, Professor Katrina Bradshaw, Alex Broom, Jane Hocking, Gerald Murray, David Wiley and Deborah Williamson, as well as our excellent hub manager, Michelle Bonello, who collectively are representing many universities, the University of Sydney, Melbourne, the University of Queensland, Monash University, the University of Technology, Sydney, as well as UNSW Sydney, where I'm based. Without the expertise, their commitment, dedication and passion of these directors and the other hub investigators and partners, we would not be where we are today. So these direct directors, together with 16 other amazing investigators and our industry partners, who I'll tell you more about soon, and other stakeholders are participating in four themes of research, which are highly integrated and collaborative, which was mentioned in the former speeches. And I'll now tell you a bit more about these themes. Most themes are co-chaired by researchers together with industry. So theme one is a major and critical theme of the hub, and it's working to develop novel antimicrobial resistant guided therapy tests. So what that means is a test that can tell us in real time 
which antibiotics will effectively treat an infection. This compares to now where treatments are often given empirically without knowing if they work. And we'll make this test available in a laboratory and a point of care platform so it can be used globally. Professor David Wiley, Katrina Bradshaw and Dr. Elisa Mokani from SpeedX are the chairs of this theme. Theme two focuses on improving protocols to identify and optimise treatments. And this addresses a major need, which is to work out how to optimise these treatments from different parts of the body. Many antibiotics don't progress towards commercialisation simply because they don't work as well in one part of the body, such as in the throat. Dr Fabian Conn is taking a lead role in this work. Professor Jane Hocking and Julie Phillips from Opal Biosciences, another industry partner, are the chairs. Theme three is a bit of a hybrid. It's a combination of diagnostic and antibiotic research, and it highlights one of our hub goals, which is to take a synergistic approach rather than just focusing on one of these areas in silo. Theme three aims to develop novel diagnostics to determine the presence of live or dead bacteria. Current diagnostic tests only tell you if a pathogen is present, but not if it's dead or alive. So if we can focus treatments only on the alive pathogens, it will significantly reduce unnecessary antibiotic use, which is fueling antimicrobial resistance. These tests will always also be able to rapidly screen for activity or candidate antibiotics against STI, so have a dual purpose. Associate Professor Willa Houston and Dr. Alison Todd from SpeedX are the chairs of this theme. And finally, theme four. So this, this theme um, has multiple purposes. It focuses on engaging stakeholders and has a broad range of other research methods, aims to optimise these AMR innovations in regards to their development and research. And it involves social scientists, epidemiologists, health economists and mathematical modellers and several partner organisations. This theme is chaired by Professor Alex Broom and Dr Tanya Applegate. One of the unique aspects of the hub, which has already been mentioned, is the involvement of a broad range of partners. There's currently six universities and 13 partner organisations, and we do welcome involvement of any other relevant industry and stakeholder groups. There are two major diagnostic companies that are key partners in the hub. The first is SpeedX. SpeedX is an Australian company working on cutting edge molecular diagnostics. SpeedX is one of the hub's major partners whose trajectory in the diagnostic space is that makes them a major player internationally. And we're extremely fortunate to have them as a partner and contributed to the program. We're also very fortunate that the program of research is supported by CEPHID, a global molecular diagnostic company, particularly known for their sophisticated but compact point of care platforms and global reach of these platforms. We've worked with CEPHID for many years, as well as SpeedX, and CEPHID will work in close collaboration with SpeedX on the hub research. Opal Biosciences, who I mentioned before, is also an industry partner, an Australian biotech company and an innovative player in infectious disease treatment. The hub also involves Australian partners who are at the coalface of the impact of AMR. Alfred Health, Western Sydney Local Health District, Sydney Setcher Health Centre and Central and Eastern Sydney Primary Health Network. Other Australian major laboratory partners are New South Wales Health Pathology, and soon to be a partner, one of the newcomers to the hub is the Victorian Infectious Disease Reference Laboratory, who will provide expertise, local isolates and molecular capabilities. As Sean mentioned, we want the hub to be global. And there are two important regional partners who are participating. The Institute of HIV Research and Innovation Foundation in Thailand and the Papua New Guinea Institute of Medical Research. And these organisations well-regarded, long-standing and considered as experts in the region will ensure that what we do has impact and relevance in Australia and the region. We are also fortunate to be partnering with two international organisations, FIND, uh, some more acronyms, uh, which is the Foundation of Innovative New Diagnostics and GARP, which is the Global Antibiotic Research and Development Program. But I you can get from those words that's the diagnostics and the antibiotics that are that are the foundation of these two groups. FIND is a global alliance who seek to ensure equitable access of reliable diagnostics, and GARP is a not-for-profit organisation aiming to develop new treatments for drug-resistant infections and to mobilise resources and partners. So these two international partners provide us with reach and global perspective globally. 
Overall, the aim our hub is a unique collaboration which has been recognised in the talks today. It brings together multidisciplinary capabilities from a broad range of scientific disciplines, together with industry and stakeholders to develop a holistic approach to tackling the problem of AMR. All of the research that we will do will be co-produced with industry and other partners and will be responding to the needs of industry. At the end of the five years, um, we have many, many goals, but in summary, we aim to have new diagnostic tests commercially available. We aim to create new efficient systems, which is what Sean mentioned, to develop these new tests and optimise these new and old antibiotics, and for these systems to have broader applicability in other areas of health, infections, bacteria and viruses. We also aim to have increased national and international competitiveness for our partners, and ultimately have improved the health and wellbeing for many people. So to demonstrate our work, we have a short video, so stay tuned, which will firstly describe what AMR is, why it's important, and it'll provide a brief overview of the program of research, but you get to see some of our researchers and partners involved in the hub. Antimicrobial resistance, otherwise known as AMR, is what happens when bugs no longer respond to drugs intended to kill them. This makes infections difficult to treat with drugs that would have worked in the past. Antimicrobial resistance or AMR generally occurs because of the constant overuse of antibiotics across the world. So this might happen if you have a respiratory infection, you attend your GP and you prescribe antibiotics that you don't need, or it could be from an infection that you've acquired in the community and that infection caused by a bacteria has already developed resistance. The World Health Organisation has recognised the seriousness of AMR as a public health issue. It's ranked it in the top 10 global health threats to humanity. If we don't do anything about it now, it's estimated by 2050, 10 million people will die, which is similar to the number of people who have died in COVID in a year across the world. The Antimicrobial Resistance Hub aims to bring people together to fight this serious issue now. At the moment, many organisations are working in silos. Industry faces significant barriers to development of appropriate tools and technology. So the hub is bringing industry together with researchers, together with a range of stakeholders in Australia and the region to combat this problem. The hub will focus on development of new technologies, diagnostic solutions, therapeutic solutions, and other strategies to put forward a more holistic approach to the issue of antimicrobial resistance. Antimicrobial resistance is a worldwide, global, serious problem. The Hub is an exciting and timely initiative that brings together researchers with industry and a range of stakeholders in Australia and the region to develop a holistic approach to combating AMR. The researchers involved include molecular scientists, epidemiologists, social scientists, mathematical modelers and health economists. All are going to work together with industry and stakeholders to develop approaches to fast track the development of solutions to combat antimicrobial resistance. We're using STI as an exemplar to develop tools that can be useful for other areas of AMR. generation resistance guided tests for gonorrhea and mycoplasma genitalium. We're also developing processes to make them available on point of care platforms and obviously a rapidly available resistance result will enable clinicians to choose the right antibiotic on the day which helps to achieve high level cure and promotes antimicrobial stewardship. 
This will help clinicians to select the most appropriate therapies for their individual patients and cure these infections quickly, thereby reducing the transmission of the infections within the community. Our research aims to generate new data about how different treatments, how antibiotics are distributed throughout the body. And this is what we call pharmacokinetic data with a particular focus on treatments for STIs. We're using existing pharmacokinetic methods and also developing new, less invasive methodologies to measure pharmacokinetics at different infection sites throughout the body. Here at UTS, this work will develop a test to tell us whether or not an infection is dead or alive, and therefore whether we need to treat that infection. Ultimately, this will help us to reduce the use of antibiotics and reduce overprescribing. If you want to innovate, you need to engage. This thing will focus on stakeholder engagement. That is, ensuring that solutions to AMR are made in deep, meaningful consultation with the entire range of stakeholders involved including policymakers, innovators, governments and communities. The aim at the end of the five years is to have a whole range of different technologies, diagnostic tests and pharmaceutical solutions that are commercially available and that are being used globally. It's going to be really exciting to see the productivity and outputs from the Hub over this time period. If you'd like to find out more about the Hub, our website contains much more detail about the work that we're doing. Welcome back. I hope you enjoyed that video and I hope you also have a better understanding of the hub and what we're aiming to achieve. Now in just the last part of our launch, I would like to welcome back Judy, ASR, ARC CEO, to join me in formally launching the AMR Hub. And um, we'll launch the Hub with this yes. plaque, which I'm going to hold up now, that will be installed at the Kirby Institute, UNSW Sydney. And I would like to thank the Minister for Education, the Honourable Jason Clare, whose name is on the plaque. And Judy, would you like to say a few words on behalf of Honourable Jason Clare? So, uh, Rebecca, thank you. Um, thank you for the opportunity um, for uh, the Minister and myself to be involved today. That's fabulous. Um, it's no small feat to have brought together, you know, great researchers, universities, industry partners and a research program that is addressing such an important global challenge. And I wish you every success in completing that program over the next five years and seeing its impact through you know, adoption and translation of the research and the commercialization of the tests and the diagnostics and um, equipment that you were talking about. I found those videos fabulous. Thank you, they were very helpful. So on behalf of the Minister for Education, the Honourable Jason Clare, I'm thrilled to open the Industrial Transformation Research Hub to combat antimicrobial resistance. Thank you very much. Yay. <laughs> Fantastic, Judy. I'm very excited and thank you so much for opening it. I'm glad we can actually start on the research now, although we have been doing the research. Um, and I really appreciate um, you opening it on behalf of the Honourable Jason Clare. Um, we're very excited and um, I, I really appreciate all the speakers today. Um, and just to acknowledge that I'm speaking on behalf of many people who made this hub possible, which I've named many people today. I couldn't name them all, but it's a very extensive collaboration. Um, you can find all the names of the hub collaborators on our website. And also a special thanks to Michelle Bonello um, for organising this and organising the hub in general. So that concludes our formalities today. And I would like to again thank our presenters and all of you for attending. And we do welcome everyone to engage in the Hub and to contact us if you've got any queries, involvement in research or have any ideas that you'd like to share with us, it would be very welcome. So thank you very much. <laughs>